you need a new host. You need someone who can get down to the nitty gritty without getting her feelings and playing mean girl games herself, okay? Because we ain't got time for it. Welcome to La Vida Rosa. I'm your host, Pinky, and today we're going to be talking about the Love is Blind Season 4 Reunion tragedy <laughs> so if you'd like to see more than just stay tuned like comment and subscribe and without further ado let's get into this video baby this reunion was a flop all the way around all the way around okay it was a complete fiasco what made netflix think that they should do a live reunion last season was really messy and it was hard for them to keep up with the drama that was happening in real time especially with sk really the stuff that they had pre-filmed was late we pretty much knew what was gonna happen already because he was being exposed left and right and honestly this season was no different they was running their mouth a lot it's the same production company for married at first sight so they need to make them do sign an nda whatever they make them do over on married at first sight they can't even really have their social media open until after the reunion i believe but i think they were trying to get ahead of everything so they want to do a live reunion i think if you wanted to do something in real time maybe film the reunion and then put it out there the same night like y'all recorded it live but then y'all put it out there you know how they do some award shows netflix had a raggedy connection child they could not handle and that's another thing y'all know this is a wildly popular show probably one of your most popular on the platform y'all should have did test runs after test runs. y'all should have looked at whatever youtube does y'all should have looked at whatever twitch does and copied it word for word bar for bar because clearly y'all servers or whatever what was going on it couldn't handle the volume of people tuning in to watch the fact that we were supposed to be tuning in at seven and i couldn't even get access to the reunion until like 11 or 12. that's absolutely ridiculous and they were clowning you all on twitter i was laughing so hard <laughs> even blockbuster rose from the dead to tell them they are not that girl even if the reunion did start on time it wasn't even good I really do think that reunions should be edited. You got to edit out all the slow moments. You're giving people all this time to answer. They're giving these long, ranting, babbling brook answers. The best part of this reunion probably was the audience reactions because I feel like that was the most genuine part. Like the way people reacted to Irina when she was about to cry and they bust out laughing. <laughs> that was me that was us at home like that was the best part of the reunion because that's how we really felt that's how we really reacted and i felt like a lot of people on this reunion were acting true i feel like the audience could have did a better job of hosting the reunion it should have had more audience participation y'all should let them ask some questions because nick and vanessa weren't gonna do right speaking of nick and vanessa it's time for new hosts i've been saying this since season one where's the position i'm ready to sign it i'm for real like they can host throughout the season. I know a lot of people are like, this is their show. They started it from the beginning. That's fine and dandy. They don't need to host a reunion. We need somebody not scared to ask the real questions to the people who need it to be asked to them and hold the right people accountable. I saw some people online saying, Vanessa must be a mean girl herself because she was protecting all of them, except for Irina. I will say she she did, she did call out Irina. The venom that she had was so misdirected. The way she was coming for Paul and Marshall didn't even make sense. Like the look in her eyes, like the way she was staring at them, asking them these questions. It y'all, it legit didn't make any sense to me. Ooh, it was making my skin crawl. I was seething by how she was talking to people that were taking accountability for what they said. These are the people that would almost immediately apologize anytime they did something wrong. But the ones that were mean and nasty, that's the one you want to be buddy buddy and you want to coddle and you want to give them the opportunity to say their pee girl please and you already not good at hosting i'm not saying you're not good at hosting in general i'm sure you'll be great on extra i'm sure you'll be great on the red carpet i feel like that's your lane but hosting a reunion we need a wendy williams type the girl that be hosting loving hip-hop reunions like we need somebody that's not scared to ask the real questions you try you too busy trying to be buddy buddy with the wrong people and it makes everybody question your character 
the only reason why last season's reunion was good was because of the cuties moment. It saved the entire reunion. And another thing, where did Bartise come from? Y'all just wanted to show that Bartise had a baby. That's it. Because what was the point? Like, Bartise had nothing to do with this season. Thank God he had on a hat and y'all spared us from his head. Because if I had to see that Bert and Ernie one more time, talking about the baby is a big fan, please get off my screen with this. I was so insulted by y'all bringing on Bartise. And then he got on here asking about when are these people having a child? And this is when I'm going to have to get right back on Vanessa's head. Vanessa, you're constantly pressuring these people. Not only were they just strangers a year ago. They've only been married a year. People that have been in relationships for years and then decide to get married still want to be married for a couple of years sometimes before they have a child. And who's to say these couples even want to have children? Not to mention most of these women are in their early to mid 30s. We already know once you get in your 30s, that's when they start calling it a geriatric pregnancy. And a lot of times they're automatically high risk. So you don't know if these people are trying to get pregnant and have miscarriages. You don't know if these women are infertile. You don't know if they're going through IVF. On top of it just being ridiculous that you're asking these people in these fresh relationships to have babies, it's just insensitive to constantly bring it up and bring it up. And even Brett was like, you know, he was trying to joke about how y'all are pushing it, but I felt like it was fair for him to say, why do y'all keep trying to force us to have these children? Anyway, let's just go ahead and get into the reunion. I'm just going to top it off by saying everybody is still together. It's a year after the weddings, I believe. These couples have went on couples trips and everything else. The success rate has been pretty bad the past couple seasons. So I feel like they're really pushing these couples because they're still together. So let's start off with Brett and Tiffany. They were stunned on everybody. I thought they looked amazing as a couple, as a unit. They just always give to me. I don't know, we really didn't get much from Tiffany and Brett. We love them as a couple, so they did gush over them a lot. Um, they didn't really portray it during the season, but Brett lived in Portland and he was three hours away. So that was kind of a struggle for them. And also Tiffany had to make a huge sacrifice to move to Portland so that they can be together. And um, that was interesting. I kind of wish they would have showed some of that. We love Tiffany and Brett, but y'all could have showed like some of the real of what they were going through. Why did we find this out at the reunion? They brought up the fact that Tiffany, you know, she said what she said after the wedding. Oh, we're going to sneak off to the bridal suite. And um, they was like, oh, well, we have footage of it. And then they showed footage of her sleeping. And it turns out they didn't even do anything during the bridal suite. So they was looking confused, like, well, what y'all about to pull up? Because we didn't even do nothing. Um, I'm so tired of y'all pulling up this fleet video. It was funny when we first watched it, but y'all done beat a dead horse with that. Okay, we tired of it. Let's give us a break from we love it we want more tiffany and brett though i hope they start a youtube channel and everything i will watch it but kwame and chelsea <sighs> chelsea look cute in her pink kwame i don't know if he filled in their hairline with a marker or what but we know that's not your hairline child we know what your hairline look we didn't seen it in hd we know it ain't your hairline but i'ma let it go i'ma let it go i hope they're happily married because i feel like once these people are married um, regardless of what we think about their relationship, they're married and if they like it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk down on nobody's marriage because I really don't know what's going on, but I'm just telling you the body language he had, his leg was crossed away from her. That's all I'm gonna say. And he also continues to do the <laughs> this fake laugh. I cannot stand that fake laugh. Kwame, we know it's fake. We know it's not real. That laugh right there, it will make me think that you're patronizing me. He did end up apologizing to Chelsea and her family because he was dead wrong for flirting with Micah and for how, you know, they just would not leave each other alone. Like, they was dead wrong for that. He did apologize. I felt like there was a lot of backtracking going on, a lot of tap dancing, trying to clean stuff up. Um, a lot of revisionist history. I feel like he really downplayed his feelings for Micah when you were over here bawling your eyes out when she broke up with you. He acted like, oh yeah, I was going to break up with her too. Now see, this is why don't nobody take you seriously. And that's why everybody believed that you hired a paid actress to be your sister. <laughs> I was Now that's one part that I was so happy they brought up. <laughs> he confirmed that that's his real sister. That's why people think you're so fake because 
you did have feelings for Micah even after even after you proposed to Chelsea be honest and real about that if you were honest and real I could possibly believe what y'all are saying about your relationship but because y'all still lying and y'all trying to uh, uh, spin this fake narrative like don't nobody believe you like you always talked about the negatives in your relationship all the time and then y'all try to act like that didn't happen so it turns out she ended up meeting his mother at thanksgiving dinner it went great congratulations his sister was not a paid actress <laughs> let me reiterate we got a tour of their home they had a let me say they had a really nice penthouse apartment now that's one thing i'll give y'all that was nice okay and then he tried to explain wanting to be called alex because he didn't kwame we know why you wanted to be called alex okay we know why we want you to be proud of your name we want you to be proud of your heritage okay regardless of who you are dating and finally ain't nobody hating on y'all ain't no ain't nobody hating on your relationship i don't know what vanessa was trying to insinuate don't nobody want kwame okay and chelsea would have married anyone let's move on to zach and bliss I'm not gonna lie y'all know I've been hard on Zach this whole season especially after him choosing Irina and then basically getting dumped and doubling back and proposing to Bliss and getting married to her I felt like it would never work because she would always feel like second choice and she would always be resentful of that but I have to say I felt the love they won me over y'all I believe in their relationship. I believe it's genuine. I believe he genuinely loves her. I believe he genuinely cares about her. And obviously I feel like Bliss feels the same way about him. I went to his page. I read his story about him and his mom. It's long, but it's well written. It really like broke everything down and it, it enlightened you as to why he chose Irina. I ain't gonna lie, my heart softened up to Zach and I low key, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them, y'all. I want it for Bliss because she seems like such a sweet, pure hearted woman. The reason why I was so mad at Zach is because I didn't like how he did her. You know what I'm saying? She deserves someone who would choose her the first time, but I feel like he's made up for it, child. Turns out that he's actually really good friends with the dad. The dad ended up coming around and the dad is going to even pay for their honeymoon. And I thought that was sweet. The dad probably saw how he looked on the show and he probably wanted to, you know, add a little sugar to it. But whatever it took to get to this place, I'm happy for him. Zach, I like you now, but no more stinking. Please, please. You were not blessed with that skill and that there's nothing wrong with it, but we don't need no more singing, okay? It was cringy enough the first time. We tired. Why well, we always got to see Zach singing and he can't even sing. Stop. That's it for them. Let's move on to Marshall and Jackie and Josh. Jackie took the coward's way out and she didn't even show up to the reunion. But she was given the special privilege of being able to do a Zoom call and do it with Josh of all people. They're in a relationship. See, the reason why it's not fair is one, everybody else showed up and faced the music. I don't like Irina and she get on my nerves. At least she came in and sat down and faced the people that she did wrong. Why did they even give her the opportunity to do that? If you're not gonna show up to the reunion, your voice don't get to be heard. She should not have had the opportunity to come on here and do that and get to spew everything she wants to spew. And nobody gets to rebut it in real time. You know what I'm saying? Because she has some of the nastiest behavior we've seen in the history of this show. And y'all gave her the easy way out. Y'all let her slip and slide around all the questions and barely asked any follow-up when i tell you vanessa went so easy on jackie especially compared to how she talked to paul and marsha we're gonna get to them but i don't know they was really trying to make fetch happen with this jackie and josh relationship we don't care we don't especially after the display that josh put on earlier this season and even when jessica asked him about that she let him weasel his up oh well you know you shouldn't be drinking like that on an e empty stomach no he just is corny and can't hold his liquor and he was acting like the jerk that he is once again she claimed she didn't cheat on marshall she broke up with him before she went and had that coffee date regardless y'all show kissed each other when y'all first saw each other it made it seem like 
y'all was fooling around and messing around. Like, would you kiss somebody upon your first reconnection after breaking up with someone? Like, as soon as you see them, makes it seem like something was going on already. She said that her last straw was they were filling out their marriage certificate and she said that he called her a derogatory name and it was like they were going back and forth joking when y'all are going back and forth you saying he got sugar in his tank you calling him sweet and we saw from the text messages you actually felt that way about him you said those things to him jokingly but you felt it and then when he jumps back at you say you're manly you look like a man and supposedly he said that he didn't say the derogatory name she says he did I don't know regardless he came back at you with the same energy you didn't like it okay and now you want to try to expose him when you're really exposing it like if, if we need to be mad at him we need to be mad at you too then she asked her about keeping the ring even though you got your arm around another man you kept this ring right I'm sitting up here like how does Josh feel that you're keeping a ring symbolic of your engagement to another man like and Josh, why haven't you gotten her one yet? Like, why should why should she even need his ring? She should have one from Josh by now, right? It's been a year. Basically, she said he just wanted to take the ring so he could go propose to another castmate so he could continue to be on the show and do the wedding. Meanwhile, while they're playing this video, <laughs> Marshall's faces were hilarious. He was making all these faces and they're so funny. He's very like animated and expressive Marshall he's always gonna take the high road when it comes to Jackie I already told y'all what he said about the derogatory comments he claims he didn't say it I just didn't understand why Vanessa was trying so hard to hold Marshall's feet to the fire when Jackie was the one who committed the most atrocities you didn't even hold hers to the fire it, it's like she was trying so hard to make him look bad but he kept apologizing he apologized for saying whatever he said and then he told her that he asked for the ring because it was a symbol of his love and then he denied wanting to propose to someone else he went on a date with another cast member um, she ended up reaching out to him when she found out that they broke up. He, he just felt slighted during this entire process. And then Vanessa had the nerve to say, well, did you ever consider her feelings? Absolutely not. She didn't consider his. At what point did Jacqueline ever consider Marshall's feelings? But he have to be so forgiving and consider hers. Like, girl, what? What was she on last night? Like, you could not read the room. You could not read the audience at all. Finally, let's move on to Paul, Micah, and I'm gonna include Irina in this segment as well. I was looking at Paul and I never thought Paul was cute until this reunion. He was kind of cute in a twilight kind of way. I could see him being in the Cullen tribe. Micah looked like Micah. At some point, they bring out Irina and they show both of them their mean girl behavior that they were doing in the pods. When Irina had to answer for herself, she was like, oh, I need a minute. When I tell you the audience started cackling, that was me because I promise I started laughing too. <laughs> Nothing Irina said makes sense. And see, this is the reason why you don't do a live reunion too because she kept going on and on, rambling, going in circles. It was word salad. None of it added up or made any sense. At some point, I guess she apologized and tried to take accountability, but I really couldn't keep up because she was just babbling and babbling and going on and on and on. I'm just like, girl, please. At one point she was like, that's not the person I am. Why do they keep saying that? Who was it? Yes, it was. That is the person you are. That was you. That Didn't nobody jump in your body and start making you act like that? That is, that's, that's very much you, honey. At some point, Vanessa asked Zach, does she ever think that Irina took him seriously. He said, no, Irina was like, we just weren't a match. And he's like, look, you was on here for TV. I love that he called her out because the way she treated him was very trifling. You could have been civil and just ended it, but you didn't. And at some point she tried to blame production and the producers telling her that she just needed to go on the little trip or whatever. And maybe it'll change her mind or whatever. Let's say that they convinced you to stay. Let's say they persuaded you to stay. They didn't make you treat him like trash. They didn't tell you to be mean to the man. They didn't say to, to um tell him he looks like a weird cartoon character and that he stares too much and, you know, just basically treat him like he's a leper. They didn't make you do that. 
Like, if you was going to stick around, at least treat him like a human being with respect. Like, you was just a jerk all the way around. Um, so, she acted like she was trying to take accountability, but she was making a lot of excuses for what she was doing. And I just love that Zach called her out and told her straight up, you want to get on this show because you want to be famous, period. But he also said he forgives you because we all make mistakes and we, you know, we all made mistakes on this show. I'm sure he got a lot of backlash. He got plenty of like backlash from me alone. So I know he got plenty of backlash for, you know, what happened with Bliss. So he did show her some compassion, but I love that he told the truth and he called her out for that because that's what we all think. And one good thing Vanessa did say, you, you know, we all felt some type of way when you first came on here, you talked about how you were bullied. And then the next thing we know, we see you being a bully. At some point it came out that she sent a DM to Bliss after she met Zach and told her that she dodged a bullet. Real, 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 real messy. You held Irina's feet to the fire. You made sure she answered for every little thing she did. But when it came to Micah, all she had to do was <laughs> wipe a few tears and she gets away with it and coddled. She doesn't even really have to fully answer because Vanessa is coming in and giving her what to say. Yeah, she took responsibility for being disrespectful for her part in flirting with Kwame and they were disrespectful to their partners and all that. She did. Honestly, Micah really got to slide for the most part. She really did. Like, she really didn't get any sort of backlash, ac accountability, nothing. They ended up talking about how Irina was flirting with Paul. Paul ended up saying that her and Micah had an understanding about flirting as long as it didn't get physical. And that kind of, that kind of made sense because he never really had an issue with her flirting with Kwame. So I could see that. Then they played the infamous video of Paul touching on her friend's butt. He completely denied it. And the way he explained it, and when I rewatched the video, Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just, it's maybe it's because when I first saw the video, the way it was framed was the girl was like, kind of like grinning, looking him up and down. And then the next thing you know, Paul is like slapping her on the butt. And she's like, ooh, and she kind of grabbed her own butt. Mm. But what he said was basically, you know, he accidentally bumped into her. So he kind of like, you know, kind of patted her like, I didn't mean to, but he didn't mean to hit on the butt. I don't know. I don't know what y'all think. Y'all let me know down below. So then we talk about how Paul said no at the altar. And of course, Micah is completely leaning into victim mode about being left at the altar. She was trying to squeeze out them tears. I didn't see one fall. She kept doing this, but I didn't see one tear fall. Y'all weren't attracted to each other. Y'all said it yourself. He wasn't your type. You wasn't his type. Y'all didn't really have any chemistry the entire time. Y'all was not matching from the beginning. Y'all was just going through the motions. I don't know if you just wanted to be on TV, but I, I do feel like you were playing the game and we're going to get into what Zach said, had to say about you later. But I do feel like you were just playing the game. I do feel like you was in victim mode and you love to be the main character. So this is your way of getting attention and being able to cry and <laughs> have people pat you on the back and coddle you. And of course you're going to play into that. But I feel like Paul made the right decision and you know it, you know it. So then they brought up the fact that at the end, Paul said that she didn't have motherly nurturing instincts. And she said she felt blindsided by the motherhood thing because that's really important to her because she's the only child. She wasn't even supposed to be here because her mother wasn't supposed to be able to have children. And she's always wanted siblings and she wanted a big family. So she felt the way that he said that. She also felt like he should have told her that was the reason why he said no at the altar because they did do a little bit of dating after that whole fiasco and he never told her that. And I, I look, I don't like Micah, but I'll give her that. He could have at least told her, but he explained it as he just felt like he couldn't see them as parents together. He never saw the nurturing side of her organically. He felt like, you know, maybe I just don't bring out this side of her. And Vanessa kept going in and asking these 50 million questions, 50 million different ways. And the man was telling her, look, it just never came out organically. And it's not something I wanted to demand of her. It's something that if it didn't come out organically, I, you know, I don't want to force the situation. He said this. 50 million different ways. I understood him exactly. The man, 
and you know he's um an environmental scientist so it's easy for him to be very verbose and um i'm sure he has a big vocabulary It's many words that he could have used that could have been confusing he said it in layman's terms and this woman was still trying to burn him at the stake she was trying to villainize this man so bad and i don't under you got micah right there all this energy you have should have been at micah should have been at jackie why are you taking it out on paul all paul did was give his opinion he feel like the woman not nurturing and you want him to lie and say she is we saw on camera how she acts when somebody is crying she laugh that is not a nurturing aspect that a mother should have she didn't have no compassion for somebody when they is hurt and crying when she told paul to break up with her she was mad that paul wasn't going fast enough she don't have she don't have compassion she's a mean girl and you want him to lie like what does she want from paul i was so mad at her grill like why are you grilling him like this and i was even looking at nick like get your wife can you hop in at any point and calm her down like anyway paul was really taking a beating and so at some point zach whispered in paul's ear and she pulled out the attack dog on zach what you what you got to say zach what you saying over in his ear and basically Zach called Micah out for being very unforgiving when you have shown less than favorable behavior on this show and you being drug as we speak in these internet streets so you have some nerve not being forgiving of this man when he has apologized and he's you know tried to explain it to you what it was and you just want to sit up here and you want to hold a grudge you want to stick the knife deeper with Vanessa and then he exposed that Micah clearly was not serious about getting married. That's what some of the other women on the show have said. Irina exposed herself for being one of those women. That was that was never your friend. You suck at picking friends, Micah. You really do. And then you had the nerve to defend Chelsea, even though she was laughing at your pain after this man uh, said no to you at the altar. You had the nerve to defend Shelby. Anyway, Zach also exposed the fact that she would talk bad about Paul behind his back. That Vanessa didn't have nothing to say about that. Vanessa wasn't trying to ask no follow-up questions about that. She wasn't trying to get on Michael's neck about that. Anyway, y'all, like I said, this reunion was a flop and a failure. Netflix never do this again. Never do a live reunion. They're never going to be good. Please hire new hosts. That we're, we're begging you on our hands and knees at this point. You need a new host. You need someone who can get down to the nitty gritty without getting her feelings and playing mean girl games herself. OK, because we ain't got time for it. Anyways, you guys, let me know what y'all think down below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I would love to hear your opinion and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.